Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will actually see how to construct some new representations uh, from the old ones. So, we will actually uh, start with uh, some general construction like uh, dual of the representations, tensor products and so on. So, let us uh, first recall uh, what is the dual. Okay. So, let us start with uh, some uh, uh, general uh, G modules. Okay. So, let us say G being uh, finite dimensional Lie algebra. So, maybe you can take it to be SLN or GLN, no issue. So, let us take V being a finite dimensional uh, G module. So, then one can actually talk about the dual of V. So, which is just the home space from V to C. So, this is the set of all C linear maps. from V to C. Okay. So, this has naturally a vector space structure and the dimension of V is same as V star. So, given a basis of capital V, one can construct the dual basis of uh, this V star. Okay. So, now uh, we have we are given that V is a finite dimensional G module. So, we want to actually define uh, G action on V star. Okay. How one can define? One can define using this form, formula. So, given x inside G okay, for x in G, f in V star and capital V in V, we define x dot V which is the new element of V star. So, we need to say that how it is defined on capital V. So, x dot v f which is acting on v to be just minus f of x v. So, we know that already what is x dot v and then we apply f on x dot v with the minus sign. So, this is the action that uh, we define on v star. Okay. So, if you recall uh, to define representation or the module, we need to have many properties. The very first property is that all the linearity and so on. It should be linear in x, linear in f and so on. Okay. So, all those things will be immediate. So, the only the non-trivial condition uh, uh, that one need to check that the bracket x y map to x y minus y x, okay. x dot y minus y dot x. So, that is the thing maybe one can verify immediately and then see this gives uh, representation or the module. Okay, let me just verify only that condition because uh, all other conditions are trivial. So, V star is indeed G module. So, like I said, I will ver only verify this uh, how the commutator acts. So, let us take two element x and y inside G and then f in V star and then V in capital V. So, then we have if you take bracket x y and then act it on f and then compute it how it acts on some given element v in capital V. Then you can see that this is by definition this is minus f of bracket x y acting on v. So, that means this is same as minus f on x acting on y dot v minus y acting on x dot v. Okay. So, then if you just rewrite this, this is going to be exactly equal to y dot x dot v. So, f applied on this minus f of x dot y dot v. Okay. So, this is what one gets. On the other hand, if we just calculate what happens to x dot y dot minus y dot x which is acting on f. Of course, we need to compute what how it acts on given v. So, this is going to be exactly equal to x dot y dot f applied on v minus uh, y dot x dot f applied on v. Okay. So, then if you just think about it. So, so, we have to take first this element and then apply x. So, that means this is going to give you minus y dot f of x dot v. Okay. 
because this is the order that in which we are going to use. So, we have to apply it like this. So, first we have to apply y then on this element and then we have to apply the other. So, that means, so this is going to give you minus then it becomes plus then this is going to give you x dot f of y dot v. Then if you apply one more time then this exactly gives you f of y dot x dot v minus f of x dot y dot v. So, you can see that this is the first term which matches with this first term, this is the second term which matches with this second term. So, that means both sides are equal. Okay? So, that tells you that uh, from this you can easily see that the bracket x y acting on f is same as x dot y dot f minus y dot x dot f. Okay? This formula is true. So, that makes this uh, uh, dual as a representation of g. So, now uh, one can actually prove this easy proportion. Okay? This is indeed immediate. So, as so a first thing, so one can construct the dual of the dual. Okay? And one can easily see that it is naturally isomorphic to as a G module capital V. And the second thing is, so using the first one, one can prove that if V is irreducible, G module, then one can immediately conclude that V star is also irreducible G module. So, now using 1, it is enough to prove that for example, V star irreducible implies V is irreducible. Okay? So, let us check both the things. So, uh, if we take uh, for example, this uh, first isomorphism, uh, then how it is actually proved? So, you can actually easily construct this natural map from V to V star of star. So, how one can actually construct? This is actually called evolution. So, let us call it E v. So, given v, so we are going to actually send it to E v v, which is a map from v star to c. What it is? You take some f and then send it to f of v. So, basically given a functional, you just evaluate at v. So, that is what uh, this evolution map does. Okay? Then it is easy to see that this evolution map is indeed 1 to 1 because dimension of v is same as dimension of v star that would imply that this map is indeed vector space isomorphism. So, it is enough to check this map is indeed giving you that uh, modular isomorphism. So, modular isomorphism is again very easy to check. So, let us check that. So, if we take uh, uh, for example, this map as E v, then we need to check E v applied on x dot v should be same as x dot E v applied on v. Okay? But what does it mean in terms of the maps? Okay? So, E v applied on x dot v, so you are going to apply it on let us say some g okay? for g in v star. So, we want to apply it. Then by definition, so, evaluation v map to evaluation at v only. So, that means this is going to be exactly g of x dot v. Okay? On the other hand, what you get it if you apply x dot e v of v on g. So, that is going to be exactly equal to first uh, you want to see that how this x dot f is defined. Okay? So, because this is in the dual, so this is exactly is going to give us minus evaluation v which is applied on x dot g. So, this is exactly going to be minus, so because this is evaluation at v, so x dot g applied it on v. So, you have to do it twice, so then x dot g at v is going to give you minus of minus g of x dot v. 
so that is exactly g of x dot b. So, basically you have to again use this dual action twice because you are working in v star star. So, that is why you have to apply twice. So, you are getting the same formula as this. Okay. So, that proves that uh, this natural map uh, that we have this evolution map from v to v star star is indeed uh, isomorphic. isomorphism. So, now uh, the second statement is immediate. Uh, for example, one can prove the converse very easily. To prove the second statement, it is enough to prove that v star irreducible implies v is irreducible. Because for converse, we can use this uh, first isomorphism, okay, which is which says v is isomorphic to v star star. So, that means v star v is irreducible, that is v star star is irreducible implies v star is irreducible. Okay, so, why this is true? Let us start with w which is uh, g sub module. So, then one can talk about the perpendicular of w inside v star. Okay, one can define this perpendicular. So, this is those functional on v star such that which takes value 0 on this entire subspace, which is a natural subspace one can associate with w inside the dual. Okay, it is basically the complement which is uh, with respect to the dual. So, one can easily see that the dimension of V is same as dimension of W plus dimension of W per. Okay, it is a basically linear algebra, one can prove this. So, now uh, one can easily prove that uh, this W per is indeed uh, g sub module. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, this is the first checking, this is the second checking. W perp is indeed g sub module of v star and this immediately implies W perp is either capital v star or 0 and this immediately implies that W is either capital V or 0. Okay. So, maybe it is the other way. So, that proves that V is irreducible. Okay. It should be the other way. So, that means uh, uh, by considering this the perp of W, one can easily produce representation inside V star, which more or less captures uh, the dual picture. So, that is why V is irreducible if and only if uh, the dual of V is also irreducible. Okay. So, let us uh, look at uh, other constructions. So, one can actually uh, generalize uh, this dual picture to any uh, home space. Okay. So, let us look at the home space. What is it? Let us say V and W being two finite dimensional uh, G modules. Then one can talk about the C linear maps uh, from V to W. So, this is the set of all C linear maps from V to W. So, then uh, one can actually define natural action on this uh, home V comma W. How one can define? So, let us say for F in home V comma W and V in capital V and X in G. So, we define this x acting on f. So, that means, it is an up, it is an again linear operator from v to w. So, when you evaluate at v, so what is this exactly? This is going to be exactly equal to x dot f of v minus f of x dot v. 
So, this is what uh, uh, the formula looks like. Okay. So, one can verify that this is indeed gives you G action on this home space. So, that makes the space into G module. Okay. So, that I will leave it as exercise. So, verify that uh, home V w is a G module. Okay. So, it is a very easy thing to do. So, now uh, we can also talk about the tensor okay, and then we will see some connections between the tensor products and this home spaces. So, here is the tensor products. So, as before let us say V and W are given finite dimensional G modules. So, we want to construct the tensor product. Okay. So, the tensor product as a space it is a span of all these simple tensors V tensor W where V is in capital V and W in capital W. Okay. So, now if you have a basis of capital V let us say the basis is given by V1 etcetera Vn of capital V and then you have another basis W1 etcetera Wm of W. Then using these two bases one can construct this tensor basis Vi tensor Wj where again i runs over 1 to n and j runs over 1 to m. So, this will form a basis of V tensor W. Okay. So, one can define G action on V tensor W and then make V tensor W as a G module. Okay. Indeed, any element of G uh, acts as a derivation. Okay. If you take x in G, then you can make x act on V tensor W by the derivation. It is x V tensor W plus V tensor x W. So, that is how it acts for any V in V and W in W. So, again one can check that uh, this is indeed gives you uh, G module structure. Okay, maybe I will verify that important uh, 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 important check that uh, the bracket x y if you take it acts as the commutator of uh, that respective action x y. So, let us take the bracket x y apply it on the simple tensors it is enough to do the computation on simple tensors okay? because using the simple tensor you can linearly extend the action to everything and then the check is stiff same as uh, the finally it will come down to the simple tensors. If you take the bracket x y if you act it on this then by definition you get it is exactly the bracket x y act on v tensor w plus v tensor the x y acts on w. So, now if you rewrite using the formula then you will get exactly x dot y dot v minus y dot x dot v which is tensor with w plus v tensor again x dot y dot w minus y dot x dot w. So, this is what you get. So, if you group them together then you get exactly x dot y dot w tensor w plus v tensor x dot y dot w then minus so this these terms are added together and then minus y dot x dot v tensor w plus v tensor y dot x dot w. So, these two terms are they are together. So, now what we need to prove? So, this is same as saying that x dot y dot minus y dot x acting on v tensor w. So, this is what we need to put. So, let us compute this. So, this is exactly going to be x dot y dot v tensor w minus y dot x 
acting on V tensor W. So, which is going to be exactly equal to first you apply x sorry first you apply y and then you apply x. So, this is uh, exactly what you get. So, let me see. Okay, so this is going to be the same order y v tensor w plus v tensor y w and then you are applying x dot. So, minus again y dot x v tensor w plus v tensor x w. So, which is same as x y w x y v tensor w plus y v tensor x w plus x v tensor y w plus v tensor x dot y dot w minus y dot x v tensor w minus x v tensor y w minus y v tensor x w minus v tensor y dot x w. So, you can easily see that uh, these terms get cancelled x v y w x v y w and then y v x w y v x w. So, the remaining terms we can match one by one. So, y dot x dot v tensor w is here, this is the first term and this is the second term v tensor x dot y w and here is the third term with the minus sign. So, this is the third term with the minus sign and this is the fourth term. So, that tells that these two formulas actually simplifies and then says that these two are equal. Okay. So, the bracket x y v tensor w is same as x dot y minus y dot x acting on v tensor w. So, this tells that this uh, formula is indeed giving you the action of g on the tensor product. There is a very close relationship between the home space and the tensor products. So, let us actually look, look, look into that. So, if we take uh, uh, this uh, tensor product of the uh, dual spaces, maybe I will leave it as exercise. So, here is the exercise 1. If we take the dual V star tensor V, then this is naturally isomorphic to the endomorphism of V. The endomorphism of V as a C space, so which can be identified as the home V comma V. Okay. So, now we also have G module structure on both sides. V star tensor V is G module because V is if you start with V being a G module then V star has a dual G representation and similarly the home space also has G module structure. So, then one can ask that this natural represent natural map whether it is a G module map indeed it is G module map one can actually prove that. So, what is this natural map? one can define it on the simple tensor. If you take this uh, f tensor v, then you can define this f v, which is a map from v to v, which actually takes w to just f of w times v. Okay. One can prove that uh, this map is indeed injective, that is immediate, one can easily prove this. So, because the dimension matches, they must be isomorphic. And uh, if you trace back the formula, you can easily see that this is indeed give you to G module isomorphism. And uh, one can extend this uh, to any uh, uh, V and W. For example, on the right side, it is home V comma V, we can think about home V comma W. Okay? So, if you take home uh, V comma W on the right side, you can see that naturally you can put V star tensor W on the left side 
and there is this natural uh, C space isomorphism, which is also G modulo isomorphism. Okay, one can check that actually. Again, the map is uh, very similar to this map. Okay, so I will leave it as exercise uh, to prove this. Actually, this is just a simple computation. So now, uh, maybe let us uh, look at some examples and then see uh, what we're one one is getting. So maybe let us focus on SL two representations. Okay. Uh, so then we can actually uh, see what this general construction mean in the SL2 representation. So, we also have Wiles uh, complete reducibility. So, we can try to actually decompose a given module into direct sum of simple modules. Okay. For example, uh, if we take V m and then if you consider the dual, okay, we, are, we have already shown that V is irreducible implies V dual is also irreducible. That means, V m star is irreducible. So, it must be isomorphic to some V of m dash, but if you think about it, if m is the highest weight for V of m star, then the same weights has to appear for the dual as well. Okay. So, in particularly m will be the highest weight for V m star. So, so that means, so there is this natural isomorphism between uh, V of m star and V of m. Maybe I will leave it to you to actually write down, okay. So, write down explicit map in this uh, isomorphism, okay. I will leave it to you. Uh, now, uh, one can take uh, two irreducible representation again V m uh, tensor V n and then actually ask how it actually decomposes into uh, irreducible representation. Since V tensor W is isomorphic to W tensor V, okay, so that is a very simple exercise. So, you can actually have this flip map. If you take V tensor W and then you can define this flip map on the tensors V tensor W map to W tensor V. So, this is the uh, flip map and this map is indeed gives you isomorphism of vector spaces between these two spaces. One can prove that this is indeed G module isomorphism. Okay. So, now using this you can see that V m tensor V n isomorphic to V n tensor V m. So, without loss of generality one can assume that m is greater than or equal to n. Okay. So, now given this data one can prove that V m tensor V n that is indeed isomorphic to V m plus n direct sum V m plus n minus 2 direct sum etcetera direct sum V m minus n. Okay. So, this is the exact uh, decomposition of uh, irreducible decomposition of this uh, V m tensor V m. So, this is very, very useful decomposition. So, let us actually uh, try to prove this. Okay. This is again very simple computation, it is not that hard. So, but one has to actually just work it out very closely. So, note that uh, we have this uh, string basis for V n. Okay. So, let us take that basis. So, the string basis of V m. So, let us call it V naught, V 1, etcetera V n. So, now oh, sorry V m. So, what will be the weights or the h weights? So, that will be starting with the m and then going down by 2 all the way to minus m. So, these are all the weights for the basis V naught, V 1, etcetera, V m. Now, similarly, we also have the string basis of V n. So, that is going to be some W naught, W 1, etcetera, W n. Again, the respective H weights going to be my n n minus 2 etcetera minus n. Okay. So, these are all the weights for the corresponding natural basis. So, then by general theory we know that this V i tensor W j, so this will form a basis for the tensor product V m tensor V m and where i will run over 0 to m 
and then j run over 0 to n. Okay. So, now let us calculate h action on V i tensor W j and then see what happens. So, this is by using the uh, derivation formula, you can see that this is h V i tensor W j plus V i tensor h W j. Note that h V i is given by m minus 2 i V i. So, that is how the uh, that is how h acts on the basis V i. Similarly, h w j is given by n minus 2 j w j. So, these formulas are known. Using those two formulas, we can easily see that this is going to be my m minus 2 i times V i w j plus n minus 2 j V i tensor w j. That is what we get. If we group them, you get m plus n minus twice i plus j times V i tensor W j. So, that is what we get on the basis. So, that means m plus n minus twice i plus j. So, these are all the weights of V m tensor V n. Okay. And note that where they lie, they lie inside m plus n minus m plus n. Okay, this is they lie in this interval and not only that, so they are the weights that are same parity as m plus n. Okay, the parity of this, parity of this is same as parity of m plus n. Okay, note that uh, in that case, so, what are all the elements that will have parity same as m plus n? Okay. So, you can go on non negative integers that you get. Okay. You can start with m plus n and then go all the way to m plus n minus 2 and so on. We can go up to m minus n. So, that is where you will be actually stopping. So, all these numbers will be non negative and all of them will have same parity as m plus n because this m minus n is same as m plus n minus 2n. Okay. So, this will have same parity as m plus n. So, uh, if we actually want to actually decompose uh, this V m tensor V n as uh, direct sum of irreducible modules, then we have to see uh, what are all the non-negative weights that we are getting uh, from the weights of this V m tensor V n because they may contribute to the uh, irreducible that highest weight way, highest weight for the irreducibles. Okay. And you can easily see that these are all the only uh, non-negative integers okay, which are which has same parity as m. Actually like uh, okay. So, they there could be more more numbers actually more non-negative numbers. So, we are going to say that these are all the only numbers that will contribute to the highest weights of the irreducibles. Okay. So, let us see how one can actually get that. So, here is the main observation. So, this m plus n minus twice i plus j. So, those are all the weights of this V of m tensor V of n and the, all the weights of uh, this module, they have same parity as m plus n. So, now using this, if we calculate what will be the dimension of given weight space V of n m tensor V of n uh, whose ath weight space, let us say. So, what is the property of A? The parity of A and m plus n should be same, have same proper, same parity. So, that is the first natural condition, okay, because a should be able to write m plus n minus twice i plus j for some ij. So, that should be the case. So, if you want to calculate, so what will be the dimension of this? So, this is going to be basically this has to come from one of the basis element. Okay. This V i tensor W j is what going to contribute to this uh, weight A. 
so that means so you are going to count the number of pairs ij such that this uh, i should lie between m and j should lie between n so not only that uh, this uh, i plus j should be exactly this a should be exactly equal to m plus n minus twice i plus j so if you rewrite that formula then you can see that uh, this i plus j should be exactly equal to half times m plus n minus a okay so so this is the only property that uh, we we have so this you count all the tuples ij because this is the ordered basis uh, so vi should come first and then wj come should come next so this is the ordered tuple ij such that so these conditions should be satisfied so now you can actually count how many of, of them are there so using this you can actually directly uh, prove this formula so let me just write the formula the dimension of vm tensor vn eighth weight space of that is going to be exactly equal to half times m plus n minus a plus 1 if a is bigger than m minus n and it is going to be exactly n plus 1 if n minus m is strictly greater than a which is strictly smaller than m minus n okay and otherwise it will be half times m plus n plus a plus 1 if a is less than or equal to n minus n so depending upon where the a comes from okay you can easily see that uh, these numbers what appears in the formula so that is actually immediate consequence of this formula so which is again like not that hard to prove this formula okay okay so what one can observe using this so using this one can immediately prove the following so if you take uh, for example the number of summands that are isomorphic to vm okay we know that that is exactly equal to the dimension of vm minus dimension of vm plus 2 so this is something we know already okay so the number of uh, summands that are isomorphic to let's say v of m dash that is exactly equal to dimension of v m dash minus dimension of v m dash plus 2 so this is already we have observed now using this you can easily see that for example let's say take m minus n okay so the number of summands okay that corresponds to like m minus n plus 2 k let's say okay number of summands that are isomorphic to v of m minus n plus 2 k so now this k will vary from 0 to uh, maximum m sorry n okay so this k can vary from 0 to n so if you take that then you can actually see this number is going to be exactly equal to so let's look at the formula if a is bigger than m minus n then this is the formula that we have half times m plus n minus a plus 1 minus so you have this m minus n plus 2k plus 1 so this is the dimension of uh, v m dash so we have to subtract minus again of times m plus n minus m minus n 
plus so we have to add one more here 2k plus 2 plus 1 then if you just work it out you can see that this mm get cancelled and then uh, this is going to give you 2n so 2 times n plus k divided by 2 plus 1 so which is going to give you exactly n plus k plus 1 and similarly here this m and m gets cancelled then you get 2n and then 2 times k n plus k plus 1 so it is going to give you minus n plus k plus 1 so this is again going to be minus this is so then you get one more plus one here sorry it should be so this is yeah this is minus here okay um, just uh, let's write it properly this is going to be 2n and then minus 2k 1 by 2 plus 1 so it is exactly n minus k plus 1 here minus so you get 2n plus twice k plus 1 plus 1 okay sorry minus it should be minus here 1 by 2 so it, it gives you exactly n minus k because this one and that one will get cancelled so that means this is exactly gives you 1 okay this difference is just 1 so the number of summands which are isomorphic to v of m minus n plus 2 k is exactly 1 okay and you can easily prove that so there won't be any other contribution from the lower terms okay which which actually comes from m minus 1 so this is already tells you that from this computation v of m minus n direct sum etc direct sum v of m plus n sits inside vm tensor vn so this is something we already proved using this computation so now it's easy to see that both the dimension matches okay so indeed you do not need to compute anything else because the both the dimension matches so this should be the decomposition of v of m tensor v of n into irreducible modules so there is no uh, extra terms so let us do one uh, small example okay and then i will demonstrate this again so let us look at v3 tensor v2 and then see actually what happens so one can so one can actually see that one can draw this uh, a nice picture so this has four dimension this has three dimension so let us say w0 w1 w2 This is V naught, V1, V2, V3. So then the tensor product actually lies here. Okay. So this is the tensor product. Let us put dots there. So this corresponds to 3, this is 1, this is minus 1, this is minus 3, this corresponds to 2, 0, minus 2. So now, if we consider this diagonal terms, okay. So all of them will have same weight. So if I take, for example, this particular diagonal term, so then you can calculate the weight. So it will be two minus three, sorry, two minus one, one, and similarly this is zero plus one, one, 
and this is minus 2, 3, this is 1. And what will be the weight here? The weight of this is 5, weight of this is actually 3, similarly the weight is 3. So, like that you can calculate. So, now you can see that uh, if you call this is capital V, V5 the dimension is just 1 and then uh, so this is plus or minus 5 ok. The dimension of V3 again plus or minus you can see this is 2. So, if you take the dimension of V plus or minus 1 that is exactly 3. Okay, because there is a symmetric and then you are you are having this. So, now if I take 5, so 5 is going to contribute to the V5, but what is the dimension of V5? The dimension of V5 is exactly 6, okay. so the dimension of this is 6 and this is going to give you 5, 3, 1, minus 1, minus 3, minus 5. So, these weights will come from this, okay. So, already 6 dimension gone. So, if you take it out this one space that will correspond to this V5. So, then uh, if you go to v, V3, then how many V3 can be possible? There is only 2 dimension in the height in the in the 3 weight space of V. So, 1 is already taken care by this V5 copy. So, only 1 remains. So, this can have only 1 multiplicity. Okay. And similarly, if you go to V1, so V1 again V of 1. So, 1 multiplicity is taken by this copy of V5 and then 1 multiplicity is taken by copy of this V3. So, there is only 1 remains the dimension of the 1th space inside that. So, that will come here. Okay. So, that is what we is going to give you uh, 1 copy of V of 1 here. So, this way actually like given uh, this data of the weights, one can immediately write down uh, the decomposition of this uh, capital V into direct sum of irreducibles. Okay. So, maybe you should do some more examples and then be comfortable with uh, SL2 representation theory because that is what going to help us in order to prove uh, results about the general GLN or SLN modules. Okay, I will stop here. So, we will uh, continue with uh, uh, more representation theory in the next class. Thank you.